Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel, and yes, believe it or not, <laughs> welcome back to Imperator Rome. Now I had said that when I ended Sparta that that was probably going to be it with Imperator Rome, but you know, given the comments uh, and the thoughts that some people have expressed, whether it's on Discord, link down in the description, or um, obviously in the comments, I said I'll keep going with this series. I think Sparta kind of had run its course and, and it came to a very positive natural end. And a lot of people said, you know, we'd love to see more Imperador Rome stuff. And obviously Imperador is the one of the huge catalysts for growth I've had on the channel here so far uh, since February, since 2.0 launched. And then, obviously, we all know what happened April 30th uh, when uh, Paradox Interactive said that they're going to pause development on the game. And that really was a gut punch to a lot of us. Obviously, I did a video kind of talking about my thoughts, you know, whether it's done or du done and dusted or not. I'm, you know, now that we have Victoria 3 out, I, I understand why. I mean, it's about resources. And that game would have a lot of steam, I think. No pun intended. <laughs> and, you know, Imperador, they had actually fixed. I mean, think about it this way. Creative Assembly canned Three Kingdoms when they said, you know, it, it really wasn't a huge financial success, even though the game wasn't complete and they had actually announced more expansions that they had then decided to say, nah, I'm not going to do it. Uh, Paradox actually decided that a game that was super hyped at launch, rightfully so, and then launch came and absolutely tanked, that they invested time and money and human resources into making the game exceptionally good and they have and then they're like okay we got it there we did the service to our customers uh it took them a while to get there but they got there and uh let's pause and let's look at other games that need a little bit of help you know whether that's stellaris hoi 4 ck3 obviously with a huge project coming here with royal court or victoria 3 launch and there are people i would assume that are you know, moving from Imperador to Vicky 3 or however PDX decides to, to shuffle those things. So I, I have a greater understanding for it now um, with a little bit of time. You know, I'm recording this here in the beginning of June and, and I can kind of see it. You know, I'm also a business person and I understand sometimes that kind of stuff does happen. The beauty of this is, however, and I looked at the overall player numbers now, they took a hit. Now, they grew dramatically again, active player numbers, after 2.0 came out. And then they kind of went down a little bit. Then they took a little bit of dip, obviously, April 30th. And it's kind of rebounded a little bit. And so it's it's actually in a better continuous player state now than it was four months ago. So that, that kind of made me rethink things. Then on top of that is, I love this game. I love this game. I still maintain... It is the best Paradox game for me. Maybe not for you. That's cool. It's okay for people to like things that are and not that you don't like. You know, I don't understand some of the hate that I sometimes get. Like, how dare you like this? You're misleading your audience by saying it's a good game. No, I think it's a good game. That's not misleading. That's called honesty. Um, but then beyond that, we've got Bronze Age mod, which, as you can tell, and if you haven't, couldn't tell that by, you know, what the description title of the video said uh we've got the bronze edge now and there's a new mod being worked on um that invicta i believe and i will be highlighting that one at some point in the coming weeks you know i've read through some of the dev diaries they've put out there what they're trying to do i'm going to go a little bit more as a general roundup not individual dev diaries but a general roundup show some of the highlights of what they're doing so that will come down the road now, i'm recording this before I leave home for a few weeks, um, and you will see this when I'm already gone. So I'll be curious to see what the comments are when I get back. I may actually reply to some uh, at, at the time. But anyway, let's get into it. This is the Bronze Age mod that I did highlight in my five great mods for Imperator Rome video. And I decided let's dive into it. This isn't going to be a 20, 30, 40, 50 episode, you know, epic series. I mean, maybe it will be if the, the numbers are high, which they probably won't be. But... <laughs> you, you never know, but I'm kind of looking at this, you know, let's do a short series here and really highlight this mod, play through it, and kind of see what we all think about it um, moving forward. Now, the description of the series says the Sea People. Now, the Sea People are kind of this 
mythological peoples that came around towards the fall of the Bronze Age. Now, obviously, we're not at that point in this game. We're right in the middle of the Bronze Age. But uh, they came about, and they sacked and burned and destroyed a whole bunch of stuff here in this area. Now, the, now there are a lot of theories as to where they came from. Some people say they came from Eastern Europe, so all the way up the top here. Uh, some people say they came from this region. Some say they were from Aegean Islands. Some people say it was the Trojans, or basically where the Spartans are, or the Minoans. You know, there are so many theories just because we don't know for sure. There were sackings, documented sackings at a given time, and references to the Sea People. So I'm calling this the Sea People. We're going to go with one of the theories. And one of the theories is down in this beautiful island here that we remember became part of Sparta. And that is the island of Crete. And that on the island of Crete, we have, of course, when I find them, where are they? There we go. Knossos. Pirate heritage. Very cool here. But we'll go into that. And we have the Minotaur and the Minoan culture. An autocratic mon uh, monarchy. Religion is Aegean. And we have Ophinius the first Idomena. And what we're going to try to do here uh, is recreate the sea people conquest and destruction of the world. But first things first, we're going to have to conquer Crete. And unlike in the vanilla game, there are a ton of other factions on the island that we get to compete with. Gortina is a thing. You can see here, that looks really cool. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll look at all of these. We've got Dawa, we've got Phaistos, very cool. And here we have Astale, Tilisos, and of course, us in Knossos, Lambris, Inatos, uh, Malia. So, I mean, there are a lot of cultures here. And the goal will be to take the island of Crete and really create a Minoan kingdom here on the island before we then launch up north and start being the sea people. And much like we did in the Sparta series, start conquering all these different islands, colonizing them, making them our own, sacking the Greek states and the coast, sacking the Anatolian coast, and heading over here to Cyprus, to the Phoenician coast, and maybe even to the Nile Delta and to Egypt. But that's very, very ambitious, and I don't know if a miniseries can cover that. But this is what we're going to go with. We're going to go with Knossos, and let's dive in, and then we'll highlight all this. But first, we've got a pirate heritage. So Legion maintenance costs plus 5%. So that means we are we are a sea people. Pirate fleet maintenance minus 10%. Naval range plus 10%. Opinion of non-pirate heritage countries minus 15%. Team. Some would say that the ancestors of this people were pirates and plunderers, always ready to profit from the misfortune of others. That is, however, a matter of perspective. Strong adventuring spirit along with a love for the open sea is the heritage that binds this people together. So what we have here, we've got five territories total. A number of pops are 43 Aegean Minoan. We have no nobles, eight citizens, 21 freemen, seven tribesmen, and seven slaves. Now our leader is none other than Ophineos. Ophineos, we'll go into him a little bit more in detail when we click on here, but uh, let's let's move on. Our culture is Minoan. Actually, what does that do? Is a member of the Aegean culture group. Pops belonging to this culture can raise the following levies. 20% archers, 20% spearmen, 20% axemen, 40% skirmishers. Religion is Aegean. So Navy maintenance costs minus 10%, and our government is autocratic monarchy. So, yeah, so the ruler reign for life. Military ideas, civic ideas, religious ideas one. All right, let's get going. Coming of the Proto-Achaeans. Achaeans. And, and just so you know, this far in ancient history, the Bronze Age is a very big weak point for me. This is a part of history. Yes, I know Greek mythology and took all that kind of stuff in school, but this is not an area that I'm very well versed in historically. So this will be a little bit of fun. All right, let's read through this wall of text here, shall we? For nearly a century, famine, drought, and social collapse have brought the known world to its knees. In the Balkans, the Proto-Achaeans 
pour down from the steppes in search of fertile pastures for their herds. Called a Aeolians, Ionians, and Dorians, they speak an ancestor of the Greek language and carry with them a new sky god who wields the thunderbolt. In the south dwell the people of the Aegean civilization, ruled by sacred kings from their place, from their palace centers. Many of their gods will form the Greek pantheon, and the proto phalanx of their disciplined spearmen are a harbinger of the Hellenic warfare to come. On the Greek mainland, Cadmea desperately raises walls in hopes of surviving the onslaught. The first true city in this age, perhaps Cadmea, will rally those around them to turn back the tide. In the Aegean Sea, the sophisticated and wealthy Minoans of Crete hey, are less concerned about northern marauders than those who would stand in the way of expanding their maritime trading empire. Two peoples are on a collision course, as different as they could be, yet both contain something of what will be called Greek. There is a reason why myth will call this the Age of Heroes, so there's no turning back. Local monthly food modifier is minus 25%. Okay, so let's uh, have a look-see here. So we're gonna go, to, uh, so Civil War, 50%. Uh, of the 25% threshold, total power base. Uh, okay, so we're... To so we could have a civil war in 21 months. That's interesting to know. We've got just little characters. Bad research ratio. I'm not surprised by that. We have unused trade routes. We have pretender support. We have an invention. An omen and free idea slots. So let's go to the trade screen in the province of Gnosos. So what do we have? We have saffron. We have fruit. So the benefits are province commerce plus 4% uh, and monthly product food modifier plus 3%, one produced in El Tinia. Then saffron gives us local slave output plus 10%. Then we have a surplus of livestock, local monthly food plus 6 and if, as this is the capital, the following benefits are applied to the entire country. Pop per promotion speed plus 25%, which is really good. And then we have furs, and this gives local tribesmen happiness of plus 4%. All right, let's look at importation here. Actually, let's look at the military. What do we got? We got archers. We have spearmen. I like the graphics here. And skirmishers. Very cool. All right, so back to the trade routes. Let's see. What can we bring in? We can bring in grain, more livestock, vegetables. And that's really it. We don't have a lot of choices. So vegetables. Well, vegetables will give us monthly food modifier plus three percent. Then we can add even more livestock, but we don't really need that. We already have that. And then grain. And grain will give us uh, local monthly food plus five. All right. So that's really it. We have nothing else we can import right now. So we're gonna go with vegetables. And we're gonna bring in some grain. There. So this will definitely help our, our food situation grow. A province loyalty is good. All right, so we've got an invention, an omen, and a free idea slot. So the free idea slots, let's look something. We've got Marshall. So we've got decisions, so we can form a mercantile kingdom at some point. Um, to do this, we need, um, has greater or equal 40 stability, has greater or equal 120 territories. <laughs> and one of the following either has bureaucracy two or three. Theocratic Kingdom, also 120, and Unite Minoa. So this is one we, we kind of want to do, and that means all of these territories, if we scroll out here, Unite Minoa, that is one we definitely want to go for. Okay, Marshall's uh, military ideas. A morale of armies, reinforcement speed or morale, recovery speed or morale of navies. You know, right now we're going to focus here domestically, so we're going to go with martial ethos. Or sorry, with the, uh, yes, martial ethos. Civics, we can either go standardized construction, so that drops build cost and build time. National commerce income plus 20%. Uh, we could use that. And central urban spaces, provincial loyalty. Not worried about that. We need, we need complex tariffs. We need more money. And then, religious ideas, we can either institutional uh, proselytism, so pop conversion speed gets bumped up even further, plus 20%. Religious calendar, so monthly war exhaustion drops down. 
or mandated observance, so omen power plus 20%. Let's do that. And speaking of omens, so we've got Athene, uh, Ductiles, Rhea, and Hyakinthos. Hi uh, so we've got a few temples here, or temples that we could go after anyway. Holy sites, be them as they may. We've got one here in Knossos. So, uh, so the deity of war, she will give us manpower recovery speed or dactyls research points. Rhea, pop conversion speed or the national freeman happiness going up. Um, let's go with this one. Perfect. And we've got inventions. Inventions, invention, uh, palatial development. Aha, uh -huh. so this is all new to me down here. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So we got four we can pick from. So get martial. So we can go with military artisans. So we get a free province investment. Martial science, army weight modifier minus 10%. And Astral Navigation, so that increases our naval range. Hmm, 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 hmm. Military Provincial Investment Cost. We're going to go with the increased naval range. For right now. Um, and then here we could go with other ones. Gain Unit of Byremes. Yeah, let's go down this way. Let's, let's go with... Uh, the piracy amnesty. So we get our, our navy going. Very cool. And now we have one more we can do. Civic advances. We can write to be heard. So national citizen output plus 3%. Standardized measurements. Import value plus 5%. Oratory advances. We can either go with fitialis. So aggressive expansion goes down. Legal patronage or humane conduct. So diplomatic reputation. Not worried about that. Religious advances, do process, no, we're going to go with civic, and let's increase our import value. Very good. Very good. Enables, okay, still, I don't even know what these down here are, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on them. Uh, partial development. We have at least one civilization technology point available. Ah, oh, so you can use your civilization tech points down here. So now we get a diplomatic range plus 100%, diplomatic reputation plus one. Very interesting. Trade development. You can bump that up. So capital import routes plus two. And diplomatic range grows up. Writing advancements. So national tax income or country civilization level plus five. Law progress. National citizen happiness. Loyalty of characters. And here we have urbanization. So this gives us desired citizen ratio and citizens. City building slots. Bureaucracy. Ah, these are one and two. All right. So here, country civilization level is three. Okay. Military science. So morale of this would bump up fort defense and morale of armies. Irrigation, population capacity. Let's do military structure. And this is the civilization technology points. Two points are gained when all our technologies have progressed one level. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, let's take a look here. So we are doing uh, martial advances here. He's got 10. He's got 8, so we're good there. And here uh, we're doing our civic advances. He has a six. Ooh, this guy's much better. He's got a nine. So we're going to replace him. And here we've got oratory. He's got an eight. Yeah, we're good there. And religious. He's got a nine and eight. Okay, so we've got everybody there that we need. We lack a commander for our navy. Is there anybody here with a good navy attribute? Not this one. He's a coward. He's tough. Ship damage taken plus 5%, but his martial skill is really lacking. We're going to go with uh, Nileos. That looks really cool. All right. So we got all that done. Nation overview. 
All looking good there. Administration, provinces. All right. Uh, we are going to disable auto trade. Governor policy. Provincial commerce, local food modifier, plus 9%. We can increase our way, way, wealth. Social mobility. Civilization effort. Centralized population. Tribal integration. And yeah, we're just going to keep it as is right now. Now our government. We will take a look at Ophinius. Ophionius. Mufi. So, he is 19 years old. He has no loyal cohorts, of course. Wealth, he's got no money. Right now, power base of 61. Loyalty, obviously, 100. Prominence, 100. 50 popularity. He's not corrupt. Very good finesse. Everything else is kind of weak. Statesmanship's okay. Let's see. He's got two children, and he is married to Pero. On top of that, he is ambitious and deceitful. Let's keep that in mind. Okay, economy. Uh, let's turn down all of this stuff right now. We just don't need it at this time. We're, we're building slowly but surely. We're good here. Culture. Everyone's Minoan. Got our trade going. We know what levies we can raise, which isn't a lot. Kind of need to work on that. We can recruit. Got a small force here. Uh, no, we're not recruiting anybody. Diplomacy. Got two diplomatic diplomatic slots. And other than that, I think we've got everything we need. Now, as far as the strategy goes here, we're going to have to look at some of our neighbors. So we here, we've got our 43 pops. We've got military tech one and five ships. Talissos is small. They have nobody that they are allied with. Let's see. We've got... We are importing. That's about it. We have no claims. So I'd kind of like to start conquering along the coast here. You know, should we ally with Gortina? They don't really like us. Who's, who's relatively strong? I mean, Gortina is going to be the big one to try to bash early. And nobody has a navy. That's one thing. We, 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 I mean, naval, naval dominance will be really fast. Let's go for somebody else here on the coast, and we will start fabricating a claim here uh, for there, Tilos, and we may as well just look around here. What do we have here? Possible building slots. Let's see. Has greater population. So we could... You sure you want to colonize the territory? Yes. Can we... What about here? Can we colonize that? No, we cannot. <laughs> We're not there yet. But we've already colonized. We've expanded. And now here, fabricate a claim. We lack the 20. Because that obviously cost... Um, our political influence, but we've already grown. We've already expanded the territory of Knossos. Very, very nice. Good to see. And I think we're in a good position here. I mean, there's the mini-map here. I mean, there's nothing out here. This is, of course, the the, the standard mini-map from, you know, Imperator Rome Vanilla, and most of that is not playable, so I'm just going to drop that off. But there you have it. A uh, quick episode here to get going with to kind of get our knowledge back up and running and take a look at the Bronze Age mod and see how we feel about this. If this is something you want to continue with and what your thoughts are here on starting on Crete and building up a Minoan kingdom and uniting the entire Minoan um, cultures into one realm and then becoming the fabled sea people and <laughs> raise all other cities and provinces around us. Be the scourge of the Bronze Age. Anyway, let me know that down in the comments. If you could and you enjoyed this, please hit that like button. If you don't want to miss any Imperador content of any type that might or may not be coming in future, as well as anything else here on the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Ram Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon.